Hey everybody, welcome to Knox Maker's last show and share of 2021. Yay, yay. We've, we've <coughs> very good, very good, I like that. Um, so we've had some very good show and shares through this year and uh, we've got several here. I am really impressed with the number that we have for this evening. And since we have several, let's go ahead and get started with Searle. And he's here to show cake, cake, cake. Oh my God, cake. Yes, it is show and share. Part of it is indeed sharing. So I made entirely too much fruit cake and I would like all of your help to finish all of this. That is. That is effectively my presentation, so. <laughs> All righty, that's great. Let's just go home now. We've got cake. We, what else do we need here? All righty, well, since we do have some other things on the list, let's go with David and miniatures. So this is a project that's kind of been on the back burner for a while for me. Um, these are some uh, miniatures that are for a tabletop war game called Bolt Action. They are 28 millimeter scale. Uh, the piece, the, the little guys come on a sprue. You basically can clip them out, put different arms, different heads, different uh, weaponry and stuff. Uh, then you paint them up and uh, base them and they're uh, essentially game pieces. Um, these happen to be uh, World War II Soviet in infantry. Uh, I've got rubble basing on them. Uh, the rubble is essentially uh, perlite which is an aggregate used for potting mixes um, that I put in a big tub, sprayed with uh, black ink, and then went over it again with uh, brown ink through an airbrush. Um, and the bricks are DOS air clay that I had a friend help me make a mold out of acrylic. And, you know, I got a big sheet that I can just spread a bunch of clay into the into the mold and then punch them out when they're dry. Um, I started on these a while back and just they've been sitting halfway done for a while and over the holiday I took some of my time to uh, finish painting them and uh, and do the basing so uh, that's That's what I got. <laughs> oh, thank you. Those were awesome. I wish that my son was here. He does Warhammer and he would love to have seen those. All righty, now we have Evan and he has a turntable. Yeah, so uh, this is something my brother kind of dumped on me a couple years ago. It's a turntable. Hopefully some of you people still know what that is. <laughs> um, anyway, the problem with it was, so this is a Technics one, which is, I guess, really nice. Um, problem with it was that there is, you, you would like set the speed and it would be spinning way too fast, like 50% fast, and then everything would sound all wrong. By the way, this is from an old radio station that my brother worked at, WREK. Uh, and so he gave it to me to try to fix it because I'm an electrical engineer. Uh, and so Technics, since this is sort of like a professional turntable, they provide this service manual that has like documentation for everything. Um, 
So this is like the full schematic of what's inside. They even have uh, little waveform diagrams so you can like test you can test different points uh, on the circuit board and see what the waveform is supposed to look like and you can verify what what parts, uh, what chips are actually broken on here. So I went through and kind of checked a lot of these um, and found out that the chip that is broken on here is actually a pretty common failure, but it's like a custom part by Technics. They didn't use an off-the-shelf IC for this. Uh, and so you can't really get them anymore. They this is from the 70s, this turntable, I think, or maybe the 80s. So they don't really make them anymore. You can't buy the chips easily. Uh, so I didn't really have much of a choice. I ended up just getting a microcontroller and like kind of bypassing most of the stuff on here uh, and just generating the signals that need to be generated directly. And so I have a little picture of what that looks here. This is not, is there an autofocus on this thing? Is there a button here that autofocuses? Focus. You can put it there, but okay. you can make it uh, go closer or further. Yeah, away, I'll zoom in. Whichever. You may not be able to see it. Anyway, it's not that fancy. This is just a microcontroller with a little trim pot for a fine adjustment of the speed. And so I just put this together with uh, this is an AT Tiny, which is a similar family to microcontrollers that you see in an Arduino, a little bit less powerful. Um, and then I just kind of shoved it right on top of the circuit board um, and then soldered in. You can see down here, these are the, this is where the buttons come through. So basically, the microcontroller can see what button, uh, what speed is selected. That's these buttons. It goes into the microcontroller and then it just generates sort of the, the speed signal which goes up onto this connector here. And so I basically just bypass everything that's on this lower board, which they did discreetly. Like they, they didn't use a microcontroller at the time. I, I'm not sure why, but they just did everything with like discrete components, um, which is a little bit more complicated. But yeah, so anyway, it works uh, and it goes the right speed. So yeah, <laughs> I brought this turntable back to life. Uh, and then I had one other thing to show really quick. On yeah, go ahead. You could do lots of stuff. You, I mean, if you were into, say, like DJing and you wanted to do some weird sound effects, you could like programmatically change the speed, like have it, you know, speed up and ramp, ramp up and down automatically or do lots of weird things. But I mean, I guess the biggest thing is now that you have access to all this computing power, you could like shrink these giant boards into just, you know, a tenth of their size into a single chip. What they use three or four ICs for, you could just do in a single microcontroller that costs a dollar nowadays. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to show, uh, so I'm a student at University of Illinois, and I help run the senior design course for electrical engineers there. So this is the course that people take right before they graduate, where they sort of do some project. They design some electrical project. Anyway, uh, one of the things that I did as a TA for this course is just I designed this ruler that has sort of some uh, electrical double E reference stuff on it. So it has like tables of values for wire gauges, um, resistor color code table, uh, like conversions, you know, here's some diagram for op amps and transistors. And then there's stuff on the back, which is like, uh, so something that people who are designing circuit boards uh, often need to know is like, what is the actual size of this part that I'm about to put on the board? Like, is it huge or is it tiny? Will I be able to solder this myself? Uh, and so it's useful to know how big something is and how small the, the little legs coming off of the, the IC are to know whether you can actually solder this by hand. So a useful reference is uh, to actually be able to see how big different components are. And so the backside of this is just lots of different they're called footprints, um, just to let you know how big parts are before you decide to use them in your design. So this is just a little ruler that I put together and the university made a couple hundred of these and just handed them out to the students. So that was a fun side project. Oh, that was awesome. I imagine you're going to be getting some people asking you where they can get a copy of that uh, ruler, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Next up, we have G. 
butter snaps or is this butter schnapps? Butter snaps. Fantastic. All righty. And you have some wood utensils. Let's see those wood utensils. All right then. So I began carving about a few days ago, and once I did, I realized, wow, I'm pretty good at carving. So, what did everyone get for Christmas? Because I got a whittling hand guide. So I made a fork, a poker, and a spoon. It may not look like much, but I also put an owl on it. I tried to put an owl on this one, but it looks like a little sleeping bear. Oh. And the spoon has no decorations yet, it's just a spoon. It's not even a full spoon. But that's just about all I did. Wanted to show you all. Those were awesome. I look forward to seeing how your whittling skills goes, if that's what you've done in just a few days. All righty, now we have, and, and Simone, I gotta tell you, when I first looked at this, you didn't quite recognize your handwriting, but it, 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 <laughs> it is Simone with a leather-bound book. She's got her leather-bound book she's gonna show us today. Book binding is about the outside of the book and not about the letters inside it. You have to go to a printer for that, sorry. Um, but uh, for Christmas, I made my dad a leather-bound copy of Ender's Game because it's one of his favorite books. But one thing that he doesn't like about Ender's Game is the author, who apparently is an awful person. So I took the liberty of removing every single reference to the author in the book as I rebound it. And I replaced it with a very popular anime character, Hatsune Miku. So there's the cover. And that's the end paper I used. You can't really see it. It's um, sort of like a spacey map with holographics. But that's the title page. And the other title page. This is the copyright page. And if you look. Up here, copyright <laughs> Hatsune Miku. And then I also designed and put in an author page. <laughs> but uh, he thought it was very funny. And if you ever have an author that you're maybe not so fond of, you can just replace it with Hatsune Miku, and it's a good time. I also have this book that I did, and I'll pass this one around because I don't have that one. But, yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering, did you write a separate author bio for Hatsune Miku? I, I absolutely did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Hatsune Miku, she's, uh, she's been very prolific. She's written lots and lots of books. Um, an ever-growing number. All righty, and to round things out, we have Kevin with an endoscope. Hello, everyone. So I found on eBay that you can get, let's see, how do I, okay. You can get these little cameras like this, five millimeters in diameter for not very much, like 10, 15 bucks. So, and there are a lot of things that use these and they call them boroscopes, which is meant for just pushing it down a pipe and you can see. But if you get down there and you wanna look around, you're stuck, so there's no way to steer. So, um, I work in the medical field and this is a common thing that they do and you, you have, your, they call them endoscopes. And 
So you have a finger and it can just kind of turn both back and forth. So I thought, let me try to make something like that. So I took quite a long time with this. Ultimately, the, it has some fatal flaws and I'll go through that. But I just want to first of all kind of show how I did it. So, you know, I made this part and then a clear plastic. And then I made a series of these. Uh, let's see, how do we zoom? So these, each one of these is articulating and it's got four holes for this wire to go through. So each one can pass it through all the way to the end at which point it grabs on. So as you pull one wire, it's going to flex in that direction. Um, when I 3D printed these, they would just snap. The, the things were not strong enough. So I ended up getting nylon and that's a whole challenge in itself to 3D print nylon, but I got that, got a bunch of those. And then I have these segments here that would, that would both, uh, I needed to have something because uh, to keep the wires in line so they didn't just all go on one side. And so that was the goal, those to pass through the wire like that and then come down to the base. Now, my goal was to have a, a, uh, a, spin, a spool, kind of like as one side would be winding up, the other side would unwind. So that was like this here, and then as this would turn, it would wind one and unwind the other. And same like here back, one wind and then on one side and then unwind it in the other. And it does work after a fashion. If I turn this, you can see that it'll, it'll turn a little bit. But ultimately, uh, you can, number one, see it's a little bit fiddly in here. And I think if I were to do this again, I think I was um, a little too optimistic of how precise the 3D printer could be and how, um, how durable, you know, so like here I was trying to do a spline shaft over, over this thing because this thing slides down over it. And you can see it's just not really, the tolerance is not great. The second problem that ultimately is with this is that as you go around the corner, you know, your wires, if you can see here, they kind of all go off into one side. They don't stay in nice, even channels. So ultimately, the, the control wasn't really good. And what would happen is that those wires would loosen up, and then these would jump off the, off the tracks. And so like here, and you can, like, you come in here, and they'll be all loose and stuff. So I think if I were to do it again, I would go back and make, like, one stiff wire that's like a push and a pull. You know, like maybe like a bicycle brake type of thing, you know, that's got a cable and that would be flexible, but you can push with it. Um, maybe do that for one axis and then just rotate to, uh, you know, if I could, so I could turn it one way and then if I needed to go the other way, just turn it like this. And so just have one axis. But I had a lot of fun making it and um, I did use it one time when I was um, working on my car and I thought the, the AC grill kept overheating and lifting water and I was able to go all the way in there and look and turn around and look around. It was pretty cool. So that was helpful. I, I think I looked around and could not find anything with like a steerable endoscope on the market. And um, to me, this seems like a, it would be quite valuable to people. And I kind of was had this idea that it would be cool to make this and make it something you could 3D print for yourself and, you know, and publish it on Hackaday or something like that. But it, Ultimately, it was too fiddly, and I just I gave up on it. But anyway, <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you for sharing that. That's a great project. I love how so many projects start with, you know, I found on eBay you can get. That, that's, a, that's a great way to get started on stuff. And that is our last presentation, unless there's somebody else out there. You, you have something you want to show and share? All righty, well, come on up. I was just going to show some pictures of our house because I. I know some people know me and my husband used to come here and then we were gone for a couple of years, but we were building a house. So um, I was just gonna show some pictures. Of the, I mean, that's just like 
a lot of pictures. I was going to try to do a YouTube video if anyone has like tips on how to do something like that. But obviously we didn't do all that contrasting like framework and stuff, but we did a lot of the inside work. And this was one of the things we did. We built a like a bathroom vanity. It was a, out of a little dresser. And we refinished that and um, put a sink. And what he did is he took the drawers. It's just the drawer faces, but it's actually a drawer now. And you open it and you can go under the sink. But that's not with the faucet and everything on it. And then um, we did all of the flooring and the wood flooring. And um, one of the things my husband did was Seth built this diner seat out of wood and um, it flips up so it has storage because our house is kind of a small house so we tried to maximize a lot of our storage room. Um, and here's what it looks like. Uh, well, it's, it's right here. So that's like with everything decorated but it's, you can't really see it. But <laughs> It goes around the table. It's painted all white now. And then um, this is some pictures I have of it, like done. It, it was in a contest for apartment therapy. And, but the, the cabinets, we, they're old steel cabinets, and we sandblasted those and um, repainted them, did all the countertops and everything. And we did the wood floor. And then I did a lot of. Uh, like accent painting, kind of. And that's some of the walls that I did. Um, what period of time is this? It's, we just built it last year. So what, about a year? Yeah, so we used to come here and then like we were gone and that's pretty much what we were doing and doing all these little projects inside. So it was about a year that we had to do all that. <laughs> so a just a lot of little projects all together, yeah. So now we're just working on the outside. <laughs> so that's it, and it's, we did a lot of like vintage stuff, like this little old sink with a like pink <laughs> sink and bath so we took stuff out of other houses and kind of tried to reuse it and make it unique. But yeah, that's what we were <laughs> doing. Um, that's part of what I need to do a video about because we actually, there's an old house there that was abandoned and we had to like tear it down and um, get rid of that. So we built on top of where the old house was. I'm not sure how old the house was, but it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we had like people that did a lot of that stuff for us, but we did do a lot of the work, like we did Tear, hand tear it down actually a lot of it and then um, we had to build a road and uh, yeah but we did like pretty much all the painting all the floor and all the everything inside was by hand and yeah it was about a year so <laughs> yeah that's what we're doing that's about it and um, if anyone has like tips on how to make a video about it or something I'd be open to hearing that but yeah thank you all right well is there anyone else any other show and chairs out there secretly show and chairs okay well then i guess moving on uh for the last announcements of 2021 um there is a uh, woodworking 101 uh, day after tomorrow. There's five tickets left. Brian is an amazing teacher. Um, you can get started. You could maybe build your own house. Um, you know, step one, go to woodworking 101. Um, and then next week we have uh, open hack night. And then moving into January, on the 25th, we are going to have our annual members meeting. Uh, so please make plans to be here if you can, because um, you know that's when we do all of our 
uh, once a year business important things. That particular meeting is closed to the public and uh, it's just the members here and important stuff gets done. Um, and if I could remember what the important stuff was right now, I'd let you know, but I'll know by then. <laughs> I'll have it all worked out by then or Isaac will because he's better at that. Um, but uh, I think that's everything and uh, go hack and be well. <laughs> mm -hmm.